Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for being here today. My name is Mary Beth Nelson, and on behalf of the High Point Regional Health System, Premier Imaging, and Cornerstone Healthcare, we are pleased to bring you a wonderful wellness talk today on the topic of headaches. So thank you for being here. I'm gonna um, let you know that Premier Imaging does have a booth set up over here, so please be sure to grab some goodies. Premier Imaging is located in the lower level of this building. Premier Imaging does offer corporate mammogram days to employers. So if you're interested in that, please see me at the end of the talk. I'll be glad to give you some more information. But please do stop by and get some of these um, cute little goodies up here. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to Pam Goldberg. Mary Beth. As you know, this is a monthly program that Cornerstone with High Point Regional and Premier Imaging presents to uh, what are our, our secret mission that's not so secret is we feel very strongly that there's a lot of healthcare information out there, uh, both in TV and in the magazines and certainly on the internet that may or may not actually be true or accurate or even right for you. Uh, so what we try to do is present our experts, our doctors, who come and talk about timely subjects every month to give you information that truly is accurate and that can help you. And if you find that there's something that you hear that, that might really resonate with you or a loved one, the doctors that we present are here in town, so they're very accessible to you. So that's kind of the, why we do this, and we will have um, next month we will be talking about memory loss so I do have a flyer for you um, that we that we have um, distributed for you to take a look at and we um, welcome you to come and bring your friends next month um, today I'm really excited about uh, both this doctor who I've had the pleasure of working with for many years and also his topic because um, according to my husband I do cause quite a few headaches so learning how I can help him make those go away besides just going away myself um, will be very helpful Dr. Eric Moser has been in practice in corner, in, in, with Cornerstone and most recently in High Point for uh, 13 years. He is uh, graduated from, for his undergraduate studies from North Carolina State University in Raleigh. He completed his medical studies at Bowman Gray School of Medical, uh, excuse me, School of Medicine in Winston-Salem. He served, served his internship and his residency training at the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta, where he also completed a fellowship. He is board certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, and his areas of special interest are neurological disorders and pain management. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce for you Dr. Eric T. Moser of Cornerstone Neurology. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a hundred slides here. I have about 15, mostly pictures, so that we can finish our lunch and leave time for some questions. Well, first thing when I do and talk about migraines and headaches, and they're very much the same, is kind of talk about what are they? I mean, people know that you have a headache, but why? What's going on? So I, I tell people it's kind of like a politician. There are cells in the brain. These cells are being talked to by all these different things. A politician is hearing, you know, debates from different sides about an issue. So these cells, if you're overly stressed, if you're not sleeping, your hormones are all over the place, weather changes, things you eat, may set these cells off to do something we don't want them to do. At this time, the nerves start interacting with the blood vessels, and these blood vessels are in the covering around the scalp and brain. We call these the meninges. Um, we start to see these cells becoming active, and on EEGs, we've seen a uh, change in the activity as this spread of, of neural activity occurs prior to having a headache. This spread is caused by some neural inflammatory mediators. These are chemicals that the nerves and blood vessels use to talk to each other. And they get out of balance. And it sets off a cascade of problems, and there's several steps to this, that will end up causing some type of headache. There is a, a relationship between the nerves and the blood vessels. Um, these blood vessels here are shown to run in the meninges. That's the covering around the brain that protects it. This covering is sensitive. The brain itself 
You can poke it, it doesn't know, but the covering is sensitive. And the blood vessels, when they constrict or dilate, can cause different phenomena. So there's a relationship between how the nerve talks to the blood vessel, and the blood vessel reacts and feeds back and feels the pain sensations to the brain. This diagram I'm trying to show particularly these two things. This is the blood vessel, the brain, the areas of the brain that are active, and talking to this covering, the dura mater or the meninges. Now, these meninges, you don't really need to know, your brain doesn't really need to know anything, but when they hurt, you're not going to tell my meninges hurt, you feel that pain refer to different areas. So on the bottom here, it shows the sinuses. So people will say they have a sinus headache. When we do CAT scans or I've even looked in with endoscopy up there, the sinuses look fine. This is where those areas of the meninges are sensitive and that's where you feel it. But the sinuses are, are perfectly fine at this period. Some people feel the headache more in the back of their neck and shoulders. And we may call that more of a tension headache. Well, that's really just the areas back here, the covering of the brain being more sensitive and up here, these are different nerves and these are sensitive. So the pain is coming from the meninges and the blood vessels that run in them. Now, when this reaction goes on and gets to the point where it's irritating the blood vessels, this cloud we see is the inflammation. I'm going to show in a moment there's a lot of different chemicals surrounding the blood vessel that's causing the blood vessel to dilate and throb. And that's when you feel it. And of course, the blood vessel is the sensation is being picked up by these nerves and it's coming back to the brain and that's how you're aware of this pain. So another way of showing it is, once again, the nerve all around the blood vessel and releasing all these funny looking chemicals back and forth in excess amounts that are causing this problem. And the blood vessel may start off to constrict and then may dilate. Because there's so many different things happening, this gives us opportunity with medications or different things to interact to stop this headache. And that's kind of the goal when we have these is to get rid of them. I don't know how they came up with this slide or this picture, but this is meningeal arteries or blood vessels. And at first they're showing what it sh should look like to begin with at baseline. And then during a migraine, this is what it would look like. You can see obviously this blood vessel is a lot larger. It's dilated and for that reason this artery you're going to feel every time your heart beat, you're going to feel that discomfort and you're going to pick it up as that throbbing headache. Now if we give a certain medication, and that's what normalized is, the blood vessel goes back to normal and the headache hopefully will go away. So that's what we think is at the origin of these headaches, neural activity, interacting with the blood vessel, inflammation, and you get this painful throbbing type phenomenon that could be here, here, or back, or shoulders. There are different headaches and we classify them different ways. The classical migraine, you may start off seeing some wiggles, funny sparkles in your vision. Um, you get where you, someone, you can't see part of their face for some reason. And then you may get nauseated, light and sound bothers you, smell, and then you get that throbbing headache. And then you kind of go on to a dull headache afterwards. That's a classical headache, but you know, headaches can be different for different people. You can have a, he a migraine headache without the headache at all. These are called migraine variants and people can have all these weird sensations occur with them. Um, the aura to a headache. Now if you remember, uh, luckily we had the movie not long ago with Alice in Wonderland. One of the things when Alice drank something she got small or got big and people thought Lewis Carroll who wrote that had migraines because plenty of people will tell us they have some bizarre uh, manifestations. I had a lady uh, just last week and she said right before her headaches she sees things levitate. Her kid was on a blanket, little baby, and thought it was levitating some. Other people it's 
you know, their perception gets a little bit weird. Things are small, big, or brighter than they should be. Emotional changes. Um, I have occasional migraines, and you know, I get grumpy before that. No good reason. I'm just kind of grumpy and irritable. Some people may get elated, uh, get very hyperactive. We had a nurse once who got where it was difficult for her to read. She couldn't understand the letters written down. And she goes, oh, great, getting ready to have a headache. You know, that was one of her auras or something that happens before the headache part occurs. And not everybody has to have those presentations. Um, it turns out it's very common for people to have neck pain, shoulder pain with their headaches. That's a very common presentation. And many people with the, the sinus headache, they're going to fill it up here around their face. Um, it doesn't have to be one-sided or the other. It can just hurt. It doesn't always even have to throb. So the headaches present many different ways. One of my partners, Travis Jackson, at Triad Neurology over in Winston, gives a very good talk about the plan. And he says, you want somebody to have their little box, their little, little safety box here when they have a headache. So if you have a plan to treat the headaches, you're more likely to be successful. And if you're just throwing a pill at it, you know, here, take this, you know, it may work a little bit, but you know, you're not going to be as successful. So the plan starts off with when someone has um, a headache, is there anything we can do to ourselves to improve or lessen that effect? And one thing is just being healthy. If you're getting regular exercise, eating well, watching your stress levels, um, taking care of other medical problems, those things do impact whether or not or how frequently you'll have a headache. I have one lady who about once or twice a year something happens with her family, she gets under a lot of stress and she just doesn't let it go and she will have just headache after headache after headache and it's kind of a panic for her you know for us to control the headache during these stressful parts or stressful periods here. Um, but you know, if you just recognize that, hey, I'm doing something, I'm under stress, just go, <sighs> you know, that actually itself will relieve some of the stressful activity, just being aware that this is bothering you. Triggers. We always try to look and see if there's something that's triggering a headache. Now, some women, it's their menstrual cycles. Some people, it's what they eat. Some people, smells. You know, that's something, I smell something very fragrant or strong, uh, it may trigger you to have a headache. As I mentioned, lots of things talking to those nerve cells in the brain that are responsible for this that will set them off to do something we don't want them to do. So these are some of the things that will do that. Overtaking medication. Um, we tell people that, yes, these things, medicines over the counter are, are good, they work, but it's one of those too much of a good thing issues. So if you're taking goody powders or excedrins all the time, it can be the source of the pain. It's, it's overdoing it. Making caffeine your friend. My brother used to complain of headaches on the weekend. And it was usually Saturday night or Sunday. And what it was, he drank a whole bunch of coffee, working real hard and then he wouldn't drink any on the weekends and he was getting some caffeine withdrawal. So we tell people, you know, be, be reasonable. Don't over drink your caffeine during, during the weekend, weekdays and if you need a little something on, on the regular weekend, that's fine, but uh, just don't constantly get the coffee and soft drinks. But also, when you're having a headache, you know, drinking something with caffeine you no, know, it works. It is a, it's a stimulant and can interact and decrease headaches. So making caffeine your friend and not your foe. So now we're into it. We started having a headache. What are our options? Now, 
This NSAID, that stands for us non-steroidal anti-inflammatory things like Excedrin, Ibuprofen, Aleve. These medications do work. Our best medications are the triptans. This is a group of medications um, they either come in pills, nasal injections, na nasal sprays, or an injection. Um, they're very successful. They're very targeted for this problem. But we kind of have to understand how to use them correctly. Others. Others are these older medications were, which were combination. They had some caffeine in them, a little bit of a sedative, and an, uh, an NSAID. These are midrin or furoset type things. In general, we try to avoid narcotics. It's been found in some studies that um, narcotic pain medications dull or changes how these receptors in the brain work uh, with headaches. And once we start using the narcotics, we become less, suscept uh, less successful with other medications. So we try to avoid them if possible. But occasionally, that's what knocks them out a shot. Um, we're all guilty of this uh, with, with, if you have migraines. You want to wait too long. I have a story about my wife. Uh, it was one weekend. She started having a headache. She took her Maxalt, and she was just miserable. She was in the bed, grumpy, you know, saying, I want to go to the emergency room. <laughs> and, you know, I timed it. I was looking at something, and I told her, honey, uh, that pill may not work for a couple of hours. And when we've done the studies, we're looking at su success within two hours, not immediately. Any pill that you take, you gotta swallow it, goes to your stomach where it's broken down, and then it starts getting absorbed in your small intestine. That takes 30, 45 minutes on a, on a regular uh, day for that to happen. However, when you're having a migraine, studies show that your GI tract slows down. It's one of the other phenomenons that can occur with migraines. So that's why a pill may take quite some time to be effective. And if you take it during the early parts, when you know, for me, if I get grumpy or weather changes, for other people, it was the letters or things looked funny or sparkles, if you take it earlier, that pill has a chance to get in your system before the throbbing starts. And hopefully we'll head that off. And going with that story, about two hours to the moment, she popped up and her little quick little walk, walked over to the kitchen, started doing what she wanted to do. Her headache was over. It took two hours. The next group that are in that box is medications that prevent the migraine. These medications we found out by accident. The story with Botox was the plastic surgeons were using them, using this for the wrinkles, and the women came back saying, hey, my migraine headaches got a little better. And it turns out some people are good responders to that. The other medications were exactly the same. We were treating something else. They came back and said, my headaches are better. And lo and behold, when we studied these medications, they yeah, they work for that. That's why they're all over the place. They don't make sense. You know, why would a couple of blood pressure pills work? Why wouldn't some older antidepressants work or some seizure medications? Um, we just found out that they did, and later on, they made good sense how they interact with the nerve and blood vessel to prevent or reduce the frequency or severity of the headaches. But these medicines have to be taken for long periods of time to be effective. You don't have to take them forever. Once the headaches are well under control, we usually we stop these medicines. Now, some people don't really want to take these medicines. I'd say, I'm not a pill person. Well, there are a few over-the-counter remedies that work. Uh, certain vitamins, like vi vitamin B12, right, which is riboflavin, uh, coenzyme Q10. There are a few combination things that are not you know, prescription that people can take that are reasonable in, in being successful in preventing the headaches. So that's our box. And what I kind of wanted to leave is that these are chronic problems. People who are migraineurs, it's a disorder like anything else. 
um, and we have ways of treating it and we treat it with a plan. The plan is if they're very frequent we give you a daily medication. If you just have one headache a month or so you just need something for that one day. But we make up a plan and try to stick with it uh, see if we can control those. Okay? Any questions? Everybody's got their mouth full, right? <laughs> Well, um, some people, they do. And what it is, you're, remember that group of cells that are arguing, the coolness is a distraction on the skin, and that may feed back and kind of lower the reactivity of those nerves that are, that are doing that. But some people, you can press here or your, your earlobe, and you also get some of this um, negative information from this that controls a little bit of headache. These are little things you can do a little, but they're sometimes effective. Yes. Yes. I get them fairly frequently on weekends. Mm -hmm. As well, like you're talking about your brother in law, I think. Right. Um, so, could it just be that I'm not getting the caffeine in soon enough if I'm used to getting it by eight? If I'm not doing it by nine, mm -hmm. you know, sleeping, then I'm going to get one? Well, it very well can be one of the triggers. Some people, uh, you may be sleeping differently on the weekends. Sleep depression or where you're not getting enough sleep can trigger that. Um, if it is the caffeine, what we try to do is limit the caffeine during the week and not drop it off on the weekend. So it could be. But caffeine withdrawal headaches are real. And it, Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are other times that I just I wake I mean I will wake up from my sleep because of the mm -hmm. so would that be more of a, a I'm sleeping differently? But then again that just may be when you're having those headaches. That may be your migraine. Um <laughs> Yeah. And then people with wake up with the headaches, you know, you probably need to have something quickly. You don't have that you know, I see the or I need to take my medicine. So um, an option there is something that works faster, like an injection or a nasal spray to treat that headache. But yeah, yeah, it, people do have waking up headaches. Dr. Wilson, is there um, any impact of age or gender on these migraines? Uh, women tend to have headaches and migraines more often. Uh, that's part of it and you know the hormonal changes I had a young girl talking about ages and, and gender I had a young girl she's one of my little favorite patients I started seeing her when she was a little girl she came to me from the GI doctors because she was having abdominal migraines they couldn't figure out why she was having tummy aches well they stopped when she became a teenager and it became regular headaches uh, as she grew older she got uh, became a teenager 17 18 she had a typical migraines that she would see wiggles, light, sound, smells bothered her, you know, and we were treating her that way and getting very successful. So as we age, headaches change. For the most part, they tend to go away as we get older, but they may change and look differently from year to year. Uh, you know, some people, as I said, when they grow older may have migraines without the headache part, and they'll have funny little symptoms of numbness down their arms or uh, confusion spells. Can you get numbness down the arm without your head hurting? Uh, that's still a migraine variant, yes. Usually it's, if you can pay attention, it will march down. You'll feel it slowly move during that time. It's not like boom, all of a sudden. It's usually not painful either. Well, there is a variant of these headaches, and people have gotten long lists of different types of headaches. There's one that women tend to get called benign hemicrania, and it's a little jabbing right there on your, your side of your head, and people have them. They can be pretty sharp at times. The problem with those is 
darn it, they happen so fast you can't really take anything, so you'd have to take something on a regular basis to try to prevent them if they're, they're that bad. But benign hemicrania, we call it. Um, <laughs> not that we're all hypochondriacs, it's um, in my family, but the question is, is there is, is a brain tumor different? I mean, if, you know, what is it? What would what would a patient have to be presenting with for you to say, holy moly, I think you have a brain tumor? Well, usually a brain tumor, uh, they grow slowly, and will cause some cognitive changes first. They, you know, rarely do they cause headaches. If you're going to have a headache from one, they usually are because uh, pressure increases inside your, your skull. Uh, that's usually worse and you may wake up with them. Um, that's the typical history of it, but most people with a brain tumor don't have headaches. They may have a seizure. Yes, ma'am? Well, for an aneurysm, they can sit there and you won't know they're there for most of your life or even your entire life. The blood vessel in the brain you know, don't really notice anything until the blood vessel may leak a little bit inside of itself or it ruptures. And that's when, wow, you know something as bad has happened. So it's kind of hard to know beforehand of any true symptoms with it. So that's they're difficult. When we look for people with uh, aneurysms, if there's a strong family history, um, that, that's one of the clues. But there's no good thing I can say, that person may have one, this person may have one. They're kind of random. They're kind of random. So if she had a, an aneurysm that ruptured, uh, she may have felt that sensation as the blood came out and then collapsed because of it. Yes, sir? What are cluster headaches? Another name for a different phenomenon of headaches. Cluster headaches typically occur in men. And they will have a feeling of an ice pick jabbing in their eye. They cry and their nose, uh, uh, their nose drips. They're usually very brief, not as brief as the benign hemicrania or just these little pops they have. But they may last for a few minutes and they're quite you know, intense in most people. There's a story, uh, they're called cluster headaches because they tend to happen in clusters and then stop for long periods or some period of time. There's a story, uh, probably 70s or 80s, where one of uh, the pitchers who was going to pitch in one of the pennant races had cluster headaches and started having one or a cluster of these before he's supposed to be pitching, you know, before the pennant race was starting. Well, they knew he, he was okay because in history, he only had like 12 of them and it stopped. So they knew they had, he would be over with these headaches before they began. But what you're describing is what we call cluster headaches or sharp uh, jabbing sensations around the eye. It's usually tearing and nose running. Uh, but they're real brief. They come on real quick. And after a few minutes, they're gone. That's only common for men. Well, it's more often than men. Uh, women can have them, but it's, you know, statistically men have those and women have these. Okay. Dr. Moser, do you feel that the, there have, since you started practicing and with all the science and research, do you think that there have been enough advances now in neurology that you can cure anybody? Well, we try. Some people are much more difficult than others. They're the chronic migraineurs who, um, they're going to have headaches very frequently. We can treat them, but we haven't been able to stop them. Uh, you know, 
some people will have what's called another phenomenon we call a centralized headache where they become refractory to the medicines and they're very sensitive and you know we're giving them all kinds of stuff they're very difficult to make go away but to answer questions we usually treat most headaches we have lots of different things we can do uh, for them different medications and then modifications or things we can give them to treat some of these more difficult headaches but there are some people who are just very difficult they're chronic migraineurs and they're you know they're going to have them and we just try to treat them when they when, when they occur Well, as I mentioned, usually uh, the sinuses are not where the headache is occurring. You feel it here. So any kind of cold compress or uh, something like that um, does help some, and people do respond to that. But it's doing so just by those nerve cells that are arguing back and forth by the coldness kind of triggers them to cool down a little bit. Yes, ma'am? Well, you know, truth, it seems more of a spectrum that, um, you know, migraines don't even have to be severe. Some people can have very mild migraines and they're perfectly, you know, up and around functional doing things. So it really is just a, a spectrum that uh, some people will have very mild headaches, which may be some components of migraine. Other times in their life, it may be more severe and more of a typical migraine. So. There may not be that much of a difference between a little mild headache you have and the migraine which has all these components to it, the visual smell things, the nausea. So yeah, I mean in a lot of ways I think they're about the same. And people may have more than one type of headache uh, occurring. Some people have more of a tension headache which is still this. Um, some people have, you know, uh, you know, headaches related to clusters and uh, hemicrania and all these different types of headaches all in one person. Dr. Moser, what do you think about non-Western um, and alternative uh, pain uh, treatment sources like acupuncture, acupressure? Do you feel that those are legitimate or in your experience are they really not? When I read about, uh, say, acupuncture or some of the other uh, modalities, to be honest, when I look at the studies, none of them are very convincing. But within the studies, there are some people who respond very well. So if we took everybody in the room and tried acupuncture for that or other problems, we find that on average it doesn't work. However, one person back there, it worked well. Yes, ma'am. As far as the over-the-counter treatments you were talking about, vitamin B12, are you talking about the CoQ10 with it? Or? Well, uh, vitamin B2 or riboflavin. Mm -hmm. uh, some companies have put them together uh, as combination pills. Fever flu is another one. Uh, fever flu tends to work for a few months and then quits on people. But some people, that's perfectly fine. But the combination of uh, riboflavin, uh, coenzyme Q10, uh, has been successful for people, especially those who just don't want to take you know, one of these prescription strength medications. But, you know, uh, they, they too can have side effects. You know, uh, french fries have side effects too. <laughs> when I was uh, studying cholesterol, doing some cholesterol research when I was in college, I um, came to my, the, 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 the doctor I was working under, and I said, because one of the studies we were doing, we would draw his blood and we did some research on his. He was the guinea pig. It was one day, I came to him and said, I think you got a, an infection. He goes, why? Because we had his blood, it had some white stuff on top. Well, he goes, that was the hamburger I just ate before doing this. I saw the fat that was in his blood, <laughs> you know. Wow. So, you know, french fries can have side effects too. What dosage would you take of that if you were born on that? I've come off my Topamax after being on it for years. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had migraines for like 25 years. And trying different things Mm -hmm. issues that really, I mean, it 
really just came to a big halt that I had to come off of it. Yeah. So now, that, I mean, I've been taking just rail tracks and Actert. Mm -hmm. um, Those are two brand name uh, immediate release or, uh, treatment medications. The studies for the rib uh, riboflavin is two to three, somewhere two to three hundred milligrams. And that is a big variance, but you know, usually it comes in fifties or a hundred. So you're going to need to take a couple hundred milligrams on a regular basis for it to help. I believe so, as long as you get it in there. Now the coenzyme Q10 comes in so many different uh, varieties, I don't know if there's a standard dose for it. The weather related migraines. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, weather changes, she's, she's down. Mm -hmm. and she's always contributed to her sinuses. Mm -hmm. But. Well, those little nerve endings that can sense pressure changes sometimes are in the sinuses. Some people feel them in their joints. As a low pressure front approaches, they may start to trigger. And what that does, those are signals going to the areas in the brain and talking to those nerves and that kind of makes them trigger the migraine. That's what we believe happens. Um, I myself, I sometimes uh, probably later this week as the storms come in the next couple of days, I may get a little bit of a headache from it. What but it's you. you uh, I don't know a good one to, to do that other than it's still a migraine and we can take a daily medication as a preventative and that that can work but can't change the weather. But usually when we look at the sinuses with people who say that they have sinus problems, yeah, they're clean. But the sinuses are sometimes sensitive back there because they're related to this nerve blood vessel problem I was telling you about. And that's where people are feeling it, but it's... You get stuffiness and everything that goes along. You can. Wall. That would be part of the inflammation. If you remember the slide that had the cloud around it, the blood vessel. Earlier you mentioned some foods could bring on. I know red wine, mm -hmm. could bring on the headaches. So, but can things like onions and garlic or... In some people, yes. I can tell you chasing triggers is, is hard. It's kind of like, to me, catching a small dog or cat. They're hard to get your hands on. Uh, and then don't always trigger them whether a cheese or something that has what's called tyramine in it, which is a, a stimulant, which you'll find in wine and cheese type things that may trigger headaches. But, you know, it won't do it all the time, so it's kind of hard to, hard to pin down. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, benign hemicrania. Yeah. Why is something so short-lived? Uh, it's a good question. It may not be yeah, related to the... Something has popped. Something yeah, um, that one we've not been able to figure out what, what it is. It probably is not the blood vessel or it's just an acute spasm of the blood vessel mm -hmm. around the meninges. That could be that. But we really don't know. We really don't know what, what triggers those. But it is a known phenomenon. Oh, there are a few, although it's not, we don't classify as a headache. There's people that have trigeminal, which is the facial nerve here that feels things. They may have chronic pain related to that, and we do surgery for those on occasion. There's also another therapy for some of these difficult chronic migraineurs called occipital stimulation. We put kind of like a pacemaker wire underneath the skin into the scalp. And by turning that on electrically, it blocks the nerves from transmitting pain signals to the brain. And some people, that, that works. But it's, it's a difficult, tricky thing to put in and do.